The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it's Monday, the beginning of another week in a rev. Oh, no, not another week. That's it. <laughs> and, and it's going to be a warmer week from what I can understand from the 50-50 weather, man. <laughs> yeah, supposedly by uh, mid to end of the week, we're supposed to actually see a temperature that's actually slightly above uh, norm. I, you know, I doubt it, though, because I watch the weather every every day. And it's amazing how when they give you those 10-day forecasts, they, you know, eight or nine days down the road, they predict 50s. And then by, by four or five days before, it's down into the 40s. And then by the time you get to the time, it's high 30s, low 40s. So we'll, I'll believe it when I see it. When I walk out of the house and I'm hit by the warmth and just can't, can't deal with the overwhelming heat, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll believe it. I just had... Uh uh, a, a sneak jump into the camera line here. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the mayor of the Flint. The mayor of the Flint <laughs> is in the house. Uh, so well, what did you think of uh, Mark Dion's column over there? For, for well, you know, look, you know, he, he's, he's right. And I'll tell you what, there are a lot of people that agree with him. That's the first time in a long time um, the state of the city address wasn't accompanied by a, a, a completely packed house of political lackeys who jump every time the mayor clears his throat and gives give him a standing ovation so it shows even the even the people are be becoming tired of the same old you know uh look look uh look what we've done well look what we've done we've increased the uh the unemployment rate and stuff but we got a lot of money now i i you know and and like he said stop cease quit no mas well he can't right yeah. Doesn't, the, doesn't the charter require one every annually now? Yep, every year by the third Wednesday of the yeah, of March. So, I mean, we're going to have to change that wonderful charter that's been in existence for, uh, for, for less than a year and is already every single week there's not something that this charter doesn't create a problem about. Even this. Nobody wants, look, I mean, if you want it, you know, the only people that go to these things are, are, are people who are, or were pro who are against the mayor or for the mayor, mostly for the mayor. In the old days, they used to stack the, stack the city council chamber. They'd all get there at 6 o'clock and hold seats for all the political hacks. And then we, if you walked in to see that you had to stand out in the hallway and, because, you know, that was the, you know, oh, look at the great support we're getting, standing ovations. And all they say is the same thing. Prosperity is just around the corner. Really? It's been around the corner for 40 years. It's been around the corner for 40 <laughs> years. And, I, you know, and, and people who did have a job and then had some, most of them have moved out. We look at the owner-occupied houses. We look, at the, we, we, we look at the general malaise that even when companies do come here, a lot of people can't get jobs because they're not trained. Uh, and, you know, it's just all it is is an exercise in political in, in, in political rhetoric and you know they all say the things and you know the future's right in front of us we're turning a corner we're firing on all cylinders where it this is a great and now the city reserve grows from 500,000 to 8 million I wonder if the police why how did they manage this little bit of wizardry they managed, the police lost an arbitration supposedly because they couldn't, you know, they didn't have the money. The city pleaded, the city pleaded, uh, you know, uh, the fact that uh, they were they were in debt as prison. We don't have any money. We can't pay those guys. Even though we gave everybody else yeah. in the city a pay raise, we, we couldn't pay these guys. We can't pay the police. I but actually we, read we, that. I read that uh, decision. Uh, yeah. And I'll tell you. Some of it made absolutely no sense whatsoever. I, I'm like, the JLMC actually did this? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I, I, I caught that arbitrator. You, you know, he's, he's fair, but he, he goes, you know, unless you present 
a ton of evidence, and if, and if you do, you win. I had them, you know, I had two arbitrations, and the last one was with this guy, Boulanger. Same guy they caught, New Bedford caught him. Actually, they were having a, a simultaneous arbitration, New Bedford firefighters and, and, and we were, and we won and New Bedford lost. Because they, you know, the thing is, you have to give them a ton of stuff. I mean, I don't know what they did. You know, I sympathize with them, but if the city was hiding eight million, you should have found it. I hate to say it, but you should have found it. And and the reality is, you should have had a list of all the pay raises and everything else they gave, and have them try to justify it. Belange is a pretty, you know, pretty solid, pretty solid arbitrator. If you give them, if you get, but the, that's the problem today. In the old days, you know, it was kind of like. But today, arbitrators find a lot uh, for cities because they don't keep their job. They're not selected. Look, let's face the reality. If they always ruled in favor of the unions, they wouldn't get, they would, because when you pick an arbitrator, you pick three and then the city and you take your three picks, their three picks, and they come up with another. They'll never get picked by, by, by cities if they always rule. But they'll rule. I mean, the arbitrators are not, you know, they, they rule on evidence. And, you know, if, if, if the city puts down 10 pages of, of proof on their position, you normally put down 250 to 500 pages to prove your position. And if you do that, and it's based in fact, and you can prove it, most of the time you'll prevail. Sometimes you don't. But, you know, I sympathize with the fact that they lost. But, I mean, this is like throwing salt in the wound. This headline is like throwing salt in the wound. They lost an arbitration because the city pleaded what they always plead. Oh, poor me, we can't afford it. But I'll give my, I'll give one of my, uh, I'll give one of my political hacks a fifteen thousand dollar stipend. Don't worry about it. I'll give Kathy Ann and Mary Sahadi seventy three five. Don't worry about it. You know, uh, we'll give somebody eleven percent. Don't worry about it. But uh, then when you go into arbitration, this city goes, oh, woe is me. We're out of money. Well, why are you out of money? You know, it's like, well, you've been spending it like a drunken sailor. Now, oh, woe is me. We found it. No, hey, hurrah, let's have a party. Eight million. But actually, they did put in there about Mary Sahadi and yeah. um, Kathy Ann, but they put it in after the fact. Yeah. And... The arbitrator said, even though they did get substantial raises, they're still under the raises in your universe. Well, you're right. But the fact is that who they, I don't know who picked that universe, but from what I read in the paper, I'll have to read, the, I, you know, if you got the arbitration, I'll have to read it, because that's not the normal universe. I mean, you can't have Taunton, which is like a third, a third of the size of Fall River, in, in a universe, you can't, they, they hand picked them for their own benefit. And obviously, uh, I don't know what possessed, you know, their bargaining guys, but the fact is that's not the bargain. You know, that's part of the preparation for an arbitration. You, number one, you've got to ensure that, that w and, and their counter to that, to Boulanger should have been, this universe isn't accurate. These cities and towns are kind of completely different you know, uh, tax base ratio. Let's let's use towns of similar size and similar budgets. Now you start with Newton on a high, Newton and Cambridge on a high, and then the bottom is Fall River and Lawrence and Lowell, and, and then you got New Bedford and Brockton. These are the cities you use in your universe. And of course, the counter to that argument is that obviously, you know, you paid based on, and I would have brought that, I would have dredged that old article out from the New Bedford Standard Times that said, if you're an administrator working in Fall River, if you're a worker working in New Bedford, that that parity, if he makes that, if he, if he comes to that conclusion, he would also have to come to that conclusion about police salaries. And therein lies where you have a problem in, in arbitration, because there's a double standard, and I would have called him on it. You call them on a double standard. You want to pay her in accordance with whatever everybody else gets paid, even though this city doesn't have the ability to pay th that salary scale, and the market will take what it bears. Well, if you're going to do that, pay our police officers the way they're paid in Newton and Cambridge and Boston. It doesn't work that way. I mean, in a perfect world, yeah, you'd get paid. But as we talked about before, smaller communities get more money because their budgets are smaller, their tax, their tax base is higher. It's mostly all residential. Newton's got a lot of money. But you can't, you know, you could actually use that argument if you made that argument at the table, it works. I know, I've done it. 
And that's the problem. The problem is that arbitrators always try to get parity between police and fire. I think the thing that really, uh, you know, that's, that's an issue. It's a very complicated, and, and, but it, it all gets down to one thing. Two, well, two things. What we said on our first show, follow the money. You have to prove they got the money. That's number one, because you can prove anything you want. If, if, the, if they make uh, the arbitrator believe they don't have the money, he's going to go, well, I know you deserve it, but you can't have it because they don't have the money. And secondly, you've got to have solid, solid proof of your position. I mean, when we went to arbitration, I had every single benefit of every single fire department in our universe. And we made, we, we had, we had bar graphs, we had, you know, we had cost analysis as we had where we ranked and every one of those benefits, if we had those benefits, if we didn't have those benefits, where our position was, all that stuff is, is, is looked at in the arbitration. But this, too, eight million bucks from a half a million Boy, that's, that's three card willy in the fast shuffle to, 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 to bring out an old quote from one of our former city administrators, Bob Connors. That's like uh, three card willy. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good rabbit out of the hat. You know, you, you hid that money well. Well, interestingly enough, the re Kathy Ann says that the reason why they have that money is because they've been um, collecting many of the back taxes that are owed. And as the tax title officer, she's required to do that. And she's been now working with the, the taxpayers before they go into a position where they lose their homes. Oh, really? Yeah. So I guess we're going to fire the person that was in charge of that before she got there, huh? I guess so. So that now what she's trying to do is justify her raise because look what I'm doing. Well, it should have been done already. You're not getting any kudos from me because <laughs> we had people in the tax department right in the city they're supposed to collect the taxes did we need to get you and give you a give you a fat stipend to do their job again government at its best you know the PETA principle you know that's it you don't do your job they keep paying you and hire somebody else to do it and if she can't do it they'll hire somebody else and before you know it we'll have five people doing the job of one all well, getting you know, paid good salaries. Exactly. And the thing is, is that, um, you know, the, the police union couldn't, couldn't prevail in their arbitration except for a small $400,000 bump. Um, but the chief needs a new special assistant. That's a confidential employee. Yeah. Well, we, we, can't afford, we can't afford to give raises. We can't, but we can afford to keep creating new positions. This mayor is, this mayor is so top-heavy and the creator of new positions that are so unnecessary, it just keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah, we have an inverted pyramid structure in this city. The, the people that provide the services, like the police and the, 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 the police officers, the patrolmen on the beat, down at the bottom with their little mini, pit, the point of the triangle on the pyramid, and at the top, we've got this gigantic administration, city administration, department administrations with assistance and the assistance and what better what better example of that is the school department i mean you look at the school department it, it's like watching a horror movie when you look <laughs> at that thing it is i mean when you look at that and remember that we had a much higher school population years ago and actually a better a better academic performance record and then we look at what we've got today deans of students assistant principals assistance to the assistants Hall, you know, uh, and then we, when they lost a few kids, they hired a few people to, like, watch the doors or something. I don't know. But they figure out a way to create all these positions. And, you know, I don't care. You know, there's nobody in the world, and it's just my, um, my own opinion, and I'm, I'm not going to say that you have to agree, but I'm going to tell you something. There's nobody in the world that can tell me that we need a dean of students in the middle schools. I'm sorry. First time I think anybody ever saw a dean of students, who, it, it, you know, that I know of is, I don't know about you, but the first time I ever saw a dean of students was in college. They had no deans of students when I went to Durfee, or even when my kids went to Durfee. Uh, they didn't have it when they were in the middle schools. But they've, they've managed to create position upon position upon position while eliminating the positions that actually help education, like they got rid of, the, they contracted out the paraprofessionals that help maintain order and allow more learning time in the classroom. 
and but they create all these administrative positions and they don't pay they don't pay small money not like the people that are working in city hall collecting your taxes and collecting these things that are making 30 grand 35 grand after 20 25 years working for the city they're making less than the pay raises and you know it always bothers me when i see this dual standard well they're not getting paid what their other people are getting paid well you know we'll go see if you can get a job in taunton then you're going to do a lot less work if you're making more money fine fact is that you know there should be a parity everybody bites the bullet at the same time everybody prospers at the same time so we've got enough money to pay these people comparable wages we should be paying the, the rank and file the people who actually do the work well we should use the same the same standard for them because otherwise what you do is you get what we get you know and i mean look uh, i know that we're getting a lot of press but the fact is that uh you know it bothers me that we're actually you know this is actually uh, supporting my my position i believe that we needed to give the, the the city administrator more money for doing a job that should have been done by this city for years why hasn't collecting back taxes when we've seen how much they owe us in back taxes it's always a point of contention why haven't we made this attempt to collect them? Why, what is she like, the Messiah? Now we got Melian left and we got another Messiah. She walked across the pond over to the tax department and she came up with this new and novel idea. Let's collect back taxes. Imagine that. <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. That's what I call really thinking out of the box. Yep, exactly. It's, it just doesn't get any better. But, you know, people, you know, one of our lovely followers, one of our viewers, turns around and says, well, if they want to keep their jobs, of course, they have to clap. It's called job security. <laughs> True. There's another place they have to do that, too, except the penalty's a lot more severe, North Korea. Exactly. If you don't get up and go, for Rocket Man, that's it. They, you, you know, yeah. You're gone. It's you know, amazing. Either, either there or Russia, you know, you know, you don't you don't vote for Putin. Hey, Russia's a democracy now. It's that's, a demo right. <laughs> that's right. Duly elected. Duly Look. elected by stuff in the ballot box. <laughs> they didn't stop. Come on. You know, the KGB, I, wait a minute, they would never do that. Come on. But look, they had an election, so you know that that's one of the uh, you know the problems we have. We want everybody to do it the way we do everything, and and well, you know, it'd be nice, but some people just don't want to do it that way. I no. mean, there are there are cultures that do not translate well. You know, that's why we failed over in over in the Middle East. The Middle East and cultures, you know, we even had people who were residents there that have said that you can't have a democracy in those countries because the fact is that those most of those governments in the Middle East, there's no separation between church and state. As a matter of fact, the church fundamentally is the government. And because of warring factions like the Shiites and the Sunnis and the Kurds, they realize that they need a more kind of totalitarian, totalitarian government they need they actually need a dictator and i actually saw some person in an interview say that that it was we were actually they were actually better off with a dictator because that's the only kind of you know it, you know people americans have a hard time unless they traveled or stayed at length overseas and experienced other cultures that these cultures are completely different you know you can't it, it will take them i don't think they'll ever be able to do it but it would take them a thousand years to be able to have a democracy because if you give those people a democracy it's not really a democracy it becomes a civil war between Shiites and Sunnis and the only time they're ever together is when they're fighting against uh, the infidels so you know that's one of the problems we have that we have this 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 idea that and it's not a, it's by the way it's not a it's not a new idea um, the British tried that a long time ago. 
they had a little they had a saying that they were going to make the entire world british that's when they during the, their colonial period where they basically controlled three quarters of the world the british empire and and you know you know we saw what happened in india and all those other places that they colonized ultimately there were problems and they, they ultimately lost it all but there were there was actually a piece written by Rudyard Kipling about that, kind of a, you know, a political kind of semi-satire. It was called The White Man's Burden because it, it was basically about Britain's idea that they had, to, they had an obligation to make all things British because they knew how to do it better than anybody else. So they, that's why they, 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 that's why they, basically took over all those countries that Britain controlled for so many years and over the course of history they've lost it again because cultures are different and until we understand that and we can help them to a degree but we can't impose our will and our culture on them that's a, that's not a way to make friends that's a way to make enemies because that's what we've done in many of these these countries they're not they're not fighting us because of anything else except the fact that they're not going to allow us to ram our culture down their throat. They're, they're happy with their culture. And if they're going to change it, they're going to have to change it over a course of a very long time. And that's one of the problems we have. Well, I, I agree. I think it's going to be very difficult for them. Um, hey, the hotel at the industrial park, the Comfort Inn, that pit, sold for $3.3 .3 million. <laughs> But the city has it assessed at $3.8 million. And the, guy, the original buyer of this building paid $4 million. <laughs> so well, obviously, the property value is not going up. <laughs> yeah, he took a hit on that one. Uh, yeah, well, hopefully it'll do well. But then again, like I said, with our growth rate of one-tenth of a percent, I don't think I, that place has always been three quarters. Well, interestingly empty. enough, the, the company that bought it, um, Jamson uh, Hotel Management, uh, purchased a Comfort Inn in Pawtucket. Yeah. And they remodeled it and made it a Hampton Inn. Now, I don't think they can make this one a Hampton Inn because there's one right over in West the Westport Port line. Yeah, yeah. But, um, Richie LaFrance. We, yeah. may, we may see it uh, change to another, another brand of hotel. But again, you know, people want hotels that are going to give them the amenities that they're paying for. And the Comfort Inn wasn't exactly the best hotel to stay in. No. Uh, and... But the other problem is who, who's going to stay because really who comes to Fall River? You know, we don't have this giant influx of people. And it's way up in the, you know, the far north end. And, you know, maybe, maybe they're thinking maybe because of this, this casino that's opening, there will be people who will stay here because they may, may have a lower rate than the casino rooms because I know there's going to be a small hotel attached to that. 400 casino. and some odd beds. Yeah. So um, there's going to be a small, small hotel attached but normally the rates at the casinos are absorbed by either uh, people who have uh, you know gambling gambling uh, uh, points or they have fairly high rates because if you go to Foxwoods they got a fairly high rate uh, and and so, most of those rooms are comped yeah and most of them yeah like you said most of them are comped and, and they got those high rollers and they just comp the rooms yeah and uh, but I mean maybe they're thinking because if you go to if you go over to Foxwoods when you first get off uh, 95, uh, there's a couple of hotels out there that are a little bit away, four or five miles away, but they're within very short driving right. distance. So people stay there because they're a third of the price. So maybe they think they're going to they're, they're absorb some of the overflow for that casino, but I'm not sure if that's, you know, I'm not sure. I hope they do because I'd like to see something well, succeed. Well, if, if, they, if they provide a shuttle, from yeah. the hotel from the yeah. from the hotel to the casino but it's going to be a relatively small casino i mean foxwoods is a very 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 large casino not anymore it's not they've yeah. shut well, down they've so much shrunk of it. it to a degree yeah. but it's still a pretty big i mean if you look at their casino even now they've cut down a lot on their on their uh, table games i know because they make more money on slot machines but um the reality is in comparison to when you go to i mean even aruba when you go to aruba there are a lot of casinos there, but they're all little small casinos and right. with, with lower overhead. So Foxwood has lost a lot with the opening, you know, you know, with the opening of Twin Rivers and stuff, and now this will cut into it. But there's still a, a relatively large casino, and so they get a lot more traffic there than, than and of course the other thing too, the hook, 
for those casinos is their their entertainment right. because of their size and the amount of money they get they get some really high quality entertainment uh, up there and that draws people for a weekend up there when they have these these really big boxing matches and and entertainment things and you know you're not going to see that that level of, of of entertainment at a smaller casino true you're not well Speaking of other sales, we got the Redevelopment Authority selling our condemned <laughs> parking <laughs> condemned, decks. <laughs> everybody, don't don't you want to buy a crumbling condemned parking garage? That's, I, that's, I, that's, right that's off high the bat, on yep. my agenda. Yep, that's high, very high. But the thing is, is that this is they admit they've mismanaged it. They've admit, admitted they've mismanaged it. So, you know, twenty dollars a month to park. Now it's up to forty-five dollars a month. And why? Because they were afraid to raise the rates because it's mostly city hall employees who, that are renting these uh, parking spaces. Really? That's your excuse? Guess what? Boston city hall employees, Boston federal employees, they pay a lot more than $20 to park every month. They're paying three, $400 a month to park their cars. Yeah, you kidding. Boston, that's one of the greatest businesses in the world, the parking garage in exactly. Boston. Exactly. You pay like... Twenty dollars for an hour if you pay, if you bought. I mean, even at Mass General, the rates twenty twenty dollars or something, and then it's uh, for uh, unless you're a patient, and then they give you a little discounted rate. But an hour is eight bucks, and after that, it's ten and right. It's, it, you it's know, not it's, cheap. It's, it's it's astronomical, and right. if you park closer to the state house, that jacks up the base rate goes from twenty to twenty five dollars an hour. And but think about this for a second. We already have a problem with parking in downtown Fall River. And we're going to sell these parking decks to private entities. You know what's going to happen there? The, pro the price to park is going to go way up. Oh, and yeah. these city hall employees are going to be complaining because they're making $35,000 a year, if that, and they're not going to be able to pay for their parking. Well, maybe they'll get a stipend. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a shot, right? Yep. Well, you know, this weekend was quite a busy weekend for teenagers. They were out... Uh, Screaming, ranting, and raving about, you know, no more guns, no more guns. And, I, you know, when I look at this, they can be a force to make change. When you consider the fact that 3.6 million students are going to become of age this year to register to vote and to vote. The question is, are they going to vote? It's real easy to say, get your resumes ready, guys. But how many times have we seen this? Well, you know, I hope they do. Not that I, not that I, you know, I agree with everything they say, but the thing is that, you know, maybe, maybe sometimes if they do the right thing for the wrong reason, uh, it, it will, it will pay some dividends. You know, if we drain the swamp, even though it's all about, you know, you know, uh, as I said, I, I am a, you know, I, I, I truly, and I do not belong to the NRA, by the way. <laughs> but um, the fact is that I, I don't believe on guns or any other issue that that legislation fixes a problem because we've seen by statistically that the, the, the places with the most gun laws have the <laughs> highest amount of gun crime. And what are we going to do now? Outlaw hammers because there was a death. There were 900 and almost a thousand deaths by hammers a few years ago. There were more than handguns. We're going to outlaw hammers. We're going to outlaw every, you know, the, you know, the, the reality is that, as I said, it's still, it's still kind of really, I find it difficult to understand how people can think that when most of these crimes are committed by crazy people or by, by maybe that's not politically correct, but that's what they are. They're, they're nuts. Okay. Or criminals. And when was the last time a criminal or a crazy person abided by the law? So, but if they do the if they do the right thing for the wrong reason, the more people we get to the polls, the more I like it. So, stay angry, everybody. We'll see you on Hump Day. See you on Wednesday, everybody. Oh, and remember, tomorrow's a city council meeting. So, ah. <laughs> you know, Wednesday's going to be an interesting show. Always a treat. Always a treat. Have a great day, everybody.